ナモアミラブツナモアミラブツナモアミラブツナモアミラブツウォーカムワンセケントカハロウィハンガンジーブディスティンプルズオンライン YouTube サンデーサービス。トゥデイサービスイスフォージュライテンス2022And this is our regular family service today. So、uh, we've already had the, op- the、uh, opening ringing of the bell, the Khan show, calling us all to mindfulness and to listen to the Buddhist teaching, listen to the Dharma.、Um, uh, following uh, these words, we will have the Vandana and Tisarana taking refuge in the Buddha. Dharma and Sangha, as well as praising the Buddha's enlightenment. After that, we will have the Sutra Gasho to Amida and then recite the Golden Chain of Love.、Um, then I will share a Dharma message with you and then we will recite or chant the Metta Loving Kindness Meditation, followed by the Nembutsu, singing of the Nembutsu, and then some closing words and announcements. Okay, so let's begin our service now by putting our hands together and reciting the Nembutsu. ナモアミダブツナモアミダブツナモアミダブツ。This is the 
truth unchanging, I ga show to Amida. Springtime brings the happy birds, their songs all praise Amida. I join them in Nembutsu. I ga show to Amida. When I call Amida's name, it's Amida calling me. Buddha's voice, my voice, are one. I ga show to Amida. When I'm lonely, I recite Namo Amida Butsu. Then I feel great compassion. I ga show to Amida. Nembutsu in work and play. Every day with Amida, every moment filled with light, I ga show to Amida. Remember the golden chain, kindness to all living things. I will follow this teaching, I ga show to Amida. In the clear bright morning sun, in the fading light of day, in the darkness of the night, I ga show to Amida. Namo Amida Butsu. I live in great compassion. This great power guides my life. I ga show to Amida. Namo Golden Chain of Love I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.
Well, welcome once again uh, to our, our uh, YouTube Sunday service. And uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, uh, share some thoughts about the Buddhist teaching with you. Um, today, uh, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about Obon, about the Bon season and the meaning of Obon. And um, uh, of course, uh, I will also be doing that um, uh, uh, for our, 20, our July 24th service as well, but uh, this, during this whole season it's a, uh, we can reflect on this, on, on, the, on the meaning of Obon. Uh, so uh, for, for um, people here in Hawaii, not only Buddhists, our summer season has traditionally uh, centered on the celebration of Obon. It's very popular uh, with uh, not, not only in Buddhist temples, but really with the whole local culture. Uh, at least it was until before COVID uh, came along and disrupted the last few years. And even this summer, our Obon observ uh, observance has, has minim been minim minimized um, uh, due to the concerns about the number of cases being higher. And some, some temples and organizations haven't, are, are canceled their service altogether. Here at Kahului, we uh, are only having one night instead of two, and, but although that's also for other reasons, but uh, uh, practical reasons. But uh, uh, and, and nevertheless, uh, you know, it is, uh, we may never get to pre-COVID uh, uh, conditions again simply because of the aging population but we we will do our best anyway but um now many of um people here who participate in the obon the bon festivities um may not understand the buddhist meaning of of, of obon they might not necessarily be interested in buddhism or buddhist teachings um, for for many um the bon season is a time to dance to celebrate cultural identity and values, or just to perform acts and rituals that are believed to benefit one's own family and to bring good fortune. In human history, um, most religious beliefs are rooted in people's desire to protect themselves and their family members uh, against the dangerous and hostile forces of nature in order to ensure good fortune and well-being. Also, people have always sought for ways to understand the meaning of death, this inevitable reality we all uh, experience, uh, impermanence. Why? We want to know why what loved ones have to leave us. Uh, it's very sad when our, our parents or grandparents, uh, fr you know, friends, um, you know, uh, siblings and so on, um, pass away. And we need some way to give that experience context and meaning. And, you know, not just to, to feel all that grief and pain, but we need to have some, some, some way to understand it, some context for it. So it's very important. And uh, we all need rituals and customs to see us through these dark and painful times in our lives. One, one, um, one of these types of customs that developed in Japan was the bond dance. Um, the bond dance was a kind of family reunion, actually, in which people, um, the common kind of folk belief was that the, the spirits of the ancestors came to visit and dance with the, um, with the family. Um, and people felt joyous to think that their parents and grandparents had returned to support them and help them with the rice harvest. So that's part of the belief that they came to help with the rice, rice harvest or whatever else was being harvested, and then, uh, and then to dance together uh, uh, with the dance. And people really enjoyed, they had a joyful feeling about this bond dance and being uh, together with, the, with each other and with the, the, all of the ancestors in the past. And, um, and they, f they felt that they were actually there with them. And then after the dance was over, everybody made a procession back to the cemetery to guide their ancestors back there with the lanterns. Or uh, they would. All, there's also the custom of floating the paper lanterns down on down a body of water, a lake, or a river. I don't know. I don't know whether people believed that their family members literally returned uh, to them or not. I think um, you know, pre-modern people, ancient people. Uh, were actually a lot smarter in spiritual terms than we are today. Since, 
you know, since the, the enlightenment of the 18th century and the, um, uh, our, our kind of, you know, uh, materialism that dominates secular materialism and things like that, um, dominates our thinking, um, uh, we, make a dis we make these uh, broad distinctions between religious beliefs and, uh, and scientific fact. And uh, um, although that, has a, that is useful in many ways, um, it's really helped us with technological growth, but it's also brought about, I think, a, 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 lot, of, a lot of tremendous uh, alienation and suffering. Um, and people are really kind of mixed up about those things and they kind of, you know, even religious, even people who are very religious are religious in a way that's been very conditioned by that sort of thinking, that sort of materialistic thinking. So that's why you have kind of fundamentalism and literalism that exists in, in, in so many religions today that actually didn't exist in the ancient world. So, you know, people didn't make, it back then, and, you know, I mean, of course, like, in among Japanese peasants and Chinese peasants and so on of the 19th century, um, they were they were still really rooted in the in the in the, in the more ancient world, pre-modern world, and they didn't make these absolute distinctions between the spiritual and the physical. You know whether they experienced the actual presence of their ancestors at Obon or not. Um, they knew that the ancestors were truly there because the reality of the present moment they understood depended on, on the past. The present moment was steeped in the past. It wasn't just uh, that a fact that the ancestors lived in the past and they were dead and now we're living in the present. They understood that the present exists because of the past, because their ancestors had made the present possible. So for the people who celebrated Obon in those old, old days, it was a way of saying to departed family members, even though you are gone from us, we understand that we are able to live life now only because of you. Even though you're gone, you are making it possible for us to live because of the life you gave us, because you showered us with kindness and benevolence even before we were born, because you taught and, return and nurtured us, just as we are doing that for future generations. Well, we in the modern world may not be doing that for future generations because we're unfortunately destroying the world. And this is a, you know, really a terrible thing that we have to, when we think about Obon and the gratitude for, for the past, for the ancestors of the past, we should think about what we're doing for our descendants in the future. I think that's very important to think about. It's, it's uh, unfortunately a, a, a less pleasant way of approaching a joyous holiday, but something we have to face, I think. Any, so anyway, this was one way that they were able to receive the Buddhist teaching of, of the Buddhist teachings, which is essentially interdependence, interconnectedness of all things. The true Buddhist meaning of the of the Bon Dance is the teaching of interdependence, uh, the the connection uh, of all things together. We only live because of others. We are able to dance now because others have danced before us. So we, we are all very fortunate to have the opportunity to receive this rare teaching of Buddhism. It helps us to awaken from our selfish attitudes and to understand the great kindness and benevolence that always surrounds and supports us, all beings, as one. We are all one because we are all part of the boundless, limitless, measureless compassion of, and wisdom, which is reality itself. We are all constantly receiving life as a gift from everyone and everything around us. This is what Buddhism teaches us. There is, but there is more to Obon than just the Bon dance itself and those, and those kind of beliefs about the ancestors. Um, other people, many people observe the Bon memorial services called Bon Mairi, uh, and uh, these are uh, services in which each family member, rem each family remembers all of their departed uh, um, members, uh, 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 family members, and uh, and uh, we also observe a Bon Major service. Uh, uh, our temple does; most temples do, uh, which is a time when the community of the temple, the Sangha, expresses gratitude for all those who uh, have brought us to this 
point, this present moment, so past members and so on. So the, the, another aspect of, of the Bon um, observance, Bon festival, is, uh, comes from a Buddhist writing called the Ulambana Sutra, um, and, uh, which tells of the mythical origins of Obon. And uh, this sutra probably originated in China at some point. Um, and uh, so we're told in the story that one of the Buddhist disciples, whose name was Moggallana or Maha Moggallana, Great Moggallana, was famous for his, his supernatural powers and his ability to see into the next world. So one day he was looking into the next world, I guess uh, browsing like we do, like we browse in the internet, you know, he was browsing through all the different Buddhist hells and realms, you know, and he, he was looking into the realm of hungry ghosts and he saw his mother in, in, that, in that Buddhist hell suffering. And uh, this filled him with horror and grief. So with the help of um, his miraculous power that Mongolana had, he tried to send a bowl of rice to his mother because everyone is starving in the world of hungry ghosts. However, the inhabitants of that realm are beings who are filled with uh, insatiable desires and they can never feel satisfied. So Mogolana's mother could not eat and enjoy the rice. So Mogolana was very upset, so he went to see the Buddha. The story takes place, of course, during the time of the Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, and he asked the Buddha to help with his mother. So the Buddha told Mogolana that indeed his mother's state was due to her uh, evil actions during her lifetime. He explained that the only way to help someone in such a condition is to make offerings to all of the monks at the end of the rainy season retreat, uh, which is a time when all the monks gathered together for Dharma study and Buddhist practice. So this was uh, the time, um, you know, in early Buddhism when it was mostly in Southeast Asia. Um, and uh, every um, and every year are the the torrential rains, uh, which um, come and and of course bring all the fertility to the land. But also, it's dangerous to be um, you know out in the forests by uh, as as the monks were uh, normally lived. You know they lived as as homeless wanderers, and so during the um, the the rainy season, they would all. Uh, gather together, and this is supposed to have been the origin of Buddhist temples. They'd gather together in one place, have a shelter with, with a shelter that they'd build or someone would build for them, and then they would all uh, practice together, do their meditation and chanting and, uh, and, and, uh, and teaching each other, giving Dharma uh, messages and so on. So at this time, of course, the Buddha was saying that the power of all these monks there their practice and their combined uh, virtues made their, their, uh, their influence very powerful. So he said, you know, at this time, if you make the offerings to all the monks, that, that they really would be able to do something to get your mom out of hell. So he did this, Moggallana did this, and um, with the combined efforts and virtues of all those enlightened monks, his mother was released from hell, from hungry ghosts. Now. That's the story of the uh, origin of Obon, or a story. So from that time on, we're told, in the, the sutra tells us that it became a tradition for everyone to make offerings to the monks at this time of year in order to help loved ones, loved ones who might be suffering in the next world. We human beings tend to worry about our, our, our loved ones, our family members, and this kind of practice um, can help to free people from some of the worries they may have uh, about their, their parents and you know, other family members who have died to feel better about their fate in the next world. Also, um, monks in temples came to rely on these offerings that they received from these, this belief, or the story may also have been in some way crafted to help to encourage that, that practice of giving donations to the temples at that time of year. Um, so it just became a kind of a thing that was done. And, uh, so, and also, um, the story of Obon 
uh, reflecting on it, uh, this particular story, it points us to something that we do need to think about, and that is that we human beings are often very harsh in our judgments. Uh, we are judgmental, that's why we're not enlightened. To be enlightened like the Buddha means to have no judgment, to accept, embrace everyone just as they are, totally, you know, as you are. Um, so we can't stand to think, though, that people um, might not be punished for their bad actions. We want people to get what they deserve. So, um, in, but in this world, it's obvious, uh, people don't always get punished for bad actions. They usually don't. Uh, and they don't always get rewarded for good actions either. So, you know, the, the rich and powerful get everything they want and, you know, take whatever they want from others, but they, they seem to do well, you know, and they live long lives and all that kinds of stuff, whereas the poor suffer and cannot uh, do anything about it, uh, whether, no, matter what, no matter how good they're, or virtuous they might be. So um, human, the human mind constructs ways to, to fantasize about, you know, how people getting their just desserts, in the next, at least in the next world, if not in this one. Also, at the same time, we also tend to create uh, ways of looking at things that sort of justify the, the behavior that, or actions that aren't good. And we say that, well, you know, the reason you're suffering is because you're not good. We, we, we say you have bad karma, so that's why you have these sufferings. And the people who uh, are, are doing well and, hap and have everything going their way, we might say, you know, and this, this is a, a rationalization that's been used throughout history, will say, well, you, you know, this person uh, uh, must have good karma. It only appears that they're doing, uh, that it might appear that they're not doing good things, but actually they must have all this good karma, otherwise they, they wouldn't have all this good fortune. Link those, the good fortune and the good karma and so on together. Um, so uh, we like to, in any case, you know, we like to imagine uh, this idea of reward and punishment, and we like to imagine that people do get their true reward and punishment in the next world. So, you know, we've invented countless stories with our wonderful imagination, and, you know, stories and myths about the re rewards that await the good and the punishments that await the evil in the next world. So that's where you get these ideas like, you know, the hell and uh, realms of hell and hungry ghosts and so on. Uh, we tend to focus a lot on punishment, especially the punishment of others. Of course, we like to think we, we want to get our reward, but others, and others will get their punishment. Um, but uh, actually, these, these stories tell us more about our own selfishness and cruelty, you know, than they do about the next world. We actually, nobody knows anything about the next world, anything at all. So that, that's our, 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 our kind of human, human uh, fantasy, our human way of thinking and in, in, um, in kind of projecting our own judgments on others. Um, so, um, you know, so what is the, the Hanganji or the Jodo Shinshu, Shinran's view, in other words, of the Obon le le uh, legend? Obon stories. Actually, Shinran Shonin never said anything about Obon, so we have to form our own understanding based on what he taught about Buddhism. Of course, in Jodo Shinshu, Shin Buddhism, we, all, we, we do celebrate Obon, um, but actually people who trust Amida Buddha, boundless compassion, boundless wisdom, boundless life, don't need to have any fear about the condition of their loved ones in the next world. In fact, Shin Buddhism traditionally views Amida as a kind of a loving parent. So it's the Oya-sama, the loving parent, a loving mother and father who is always working to save everyone from the results of their bad actions. No matter what we may have done, our loving parent, Amida, Oya-sama, embraces us with love and acceptance. Of course, if human parents uh, actually accepted without question everything their children do, and some parents do this, the children would certainly become terribly spoiled, don't you think? Um, not necessarily the best form of parenting. In our everyday life, we need consequences in order to learn wisdom. And uh, sometimes that's the job of a, a good parent, is to provide some consequences. 
but the image of Amida as a loving parent can is very helpful to us in understanding the de- the meaning of 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 Buddhism and of the Nembutsu path. And actually, the parent, the good parent, that does provide consequences. That's only on one level. On the deeper level, there is that total acceptance, that love of the child, uh, w- wish to help the child no matter what. So Amida itself, the word Amida means boundless, measureless, limitless compassion, limitless love, the, which, is, which is the reality of life, the light that always shines on us, the, the embrace of the universe, always nurturing and sustaining us. So when we say Namo Amida Butsu, we realize we're always surrounded by compassion. We're totally accepted just as we are. And, you know, the love of all of our family members, our, uh, our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents, everyone, everyone's love supporting us, they are, all, they are part of Amida's compassion. They are the way Amida's compassion, one way that Amida's compassion is expressed to us. We're always embraced by that. Uh, but we don't have to worry about our loved ones who have died. Um, you know, contrary to the Obon story that says that you know we have to make offerings and so on. Uh, we sh- we can make offerings and we ought to make offerings to support the the Buddhist community and to support other kinds of charities and things that are help people. That's very important for us to do, but not in order to to rescue our loved ones in the next world. Our teacher Shinran taught us that we can simply let go of our anxieties about where our departed loved ones have gone. Because of Amida's great compassionate vow or aspiration, uh, I can let go of all my fears about where I will go to when I pass away and simply trust in the limitless wisdom and compassion, Nembutsu, Namo Amida Butsu, that teaches us to look at ourselves honestly, to see ourselves honestly. We can see ourselves just as we are, limited and full of, of selfishness. And when we see ourselves as we truly are, with all of our good and bad mixed together, we become able to appreciate others more because we realize, you know, we're getting all this love and nur- nurturing and support, you know, despite the fact that we, we don't necessarily deserve it. You know, we haven't done anything to earn this wonderful life that we're always being given, but we, we receive it w- with uh, as, as a gift. And, we, and, we, and it tends to make us have that humility to such a, such a person as I receive such great love and compassion. So that naturally I want to express gratitude and I also want to, to, uh, to have that kind of, to give that kind of support to others. So we all struggle in life and try to do good, but often we do bad. Thus, we don't need to have uh, to any judgments about the good or bad acts of others. Instead, we can simply accept them, others, as they are, the way Amida accepts us. We can all be loving parents to each other. We can all be that to each other. Isn't that a a great idea? Living lives of appreciation and acceptance. That's what we need if we wish to have peace and goodness in the world for everyone. So at Bon, at the Bon time, Obon time, we express appreciation for our departed loved ones by dancing and by observing memorial services and by coming together as a community. We do all this as a means by which to awaken ourselves, to understand our oneness with others, to realize that life is oneness. This is the spirit in which we should participate we should participate in Obon activities, particularly as we remember our departed loved ones. By expressing appreciation for those who have given and sustained our lives, we are able to awaken to the great compassion which constantly embraces and sustains all beings. So thank you very much for listening, and let's uh, put our hands together now and recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. 
May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, joining us for our uh, YouTube Sunday service for Kahului Honganji, and uh, hope you enjoyed the service and that you're able to take away something meaningful for your life. Um, so uh, I just have a few announcements. Uh, the, in this upcoming week, July 15th, Friday, here at the temple uh, in Kahului, we will be having our Hatsubon, first year Bon memorial service for uh, those uh, who have lost loved ones in the past year since last Obon season. That will be at 6 p.m. and then followed by our Bon dance at 7.30. Uh, on Saturday evening, July 16th, we will not be having the second night of Bon dance. We just simply unfortunately can't do that uh, this year because of uh, just not, not having enough uh, um, people power to, to, to be able to run a second night. Uh, that will be, uh, but we will be having the Hatsubon, the second night of the Hatsubon service for those who are uh, uh, scheduled for that night. But some, some are scheduled for Friday and some are for Saturday. And others may, uh, are welcome to come. Anyone else is welcome to come as well. Um, there'll be no YouTube services for that. The following day, Sunday, July 17th, uh, we will not be having Sunday service and there will be no YouTube service. July 24th, the following Sunday, is our Obon um, major service uh, in the temple here on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, with our family gratitude remembrance and uh, there will also be a YouTube uh, service as well that week. 
On Sunday, July 31st, there will be no services. And then on Sunday, August 7th, we will have our family service and YouTube service. So thank you so much for joining us. And let's put our hands together now in Gasho and recite the Nembutsu as we close the service. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.